good evening, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. It's heartening to see so many of you here tonight to learn more about timber engineering and post and beam construction. We're here tonight uh, for a presentation on efficiencies in timber engineering, widening the opportunity for craftsmanship and changing the built environment. Our presenter tonight is uh, Hannes Blas, CEO of Rotha Blas USA, followed the evolution of timber construction in different countries over the course of his career, and now heads up Rotha Blast's efforts in the USA. Rotha Blast is an Italian company with roots in the Alpine region of Northern Italy and specializes in the development and supply of high-tech solutions for, for wood construction sector. Today, Rotha Blast is one of the leading companies worldwide in this industry. Tonight, Hannes will focus on options to assist timber framers in doing more with less using engineered structural components. The tightening labor market and the increased cost of materials with increasing customer expectations and tight budget is a challenge we're all facing today. Rotha Blast celebrating its 30th year in providing solutions to the timber industry is poised to meet these challenges with you. Hannes, take it away. Thanks, Mac. Thank you for everybody else uh, for showing up today. Um, good to see so many familiar faces. Um, I, we uh, Total Blast, we have been, uh, we have attended several um, events, timber framework skills uh, conferences. Um, I think our, my first one was four years ago, and we will for sure be also on uh, the next one, um, hopefully in September, as Mike already uh, introduced us. That might be the first one where we can all see again um, in the foreseeable future. And yeah, I will go ahead and share my screen here because I prepared a little presentation. Let me know if you, can you see my screen? We can see your screen. Okay, now full screen presentation. Okay. Excellent. Um, yes, uh, so uh, yeah, Rotoblast, we have at Rotoblast, we say we have an Alpine heart with an international spirit. Um, we are based or our headquarters uh, is, is based in uh, Northern I Italy. We also have a North American uh, branch and uh, company in the US and Canada and also warehouse capabilities here in North America. So um, we 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 uh, embody this help and heart true to our roots, but branching out into the world. Um, a little bit about about the history. Uh, Rodoblas celebrates thirty years today, this year, uh, this summer. Um, so, nineteen ninety one, it was founded as an uh, as an importer distributor of tools from Germany into the uh, little region of South Tyrol and the north of Italy. Uh, that region is um, historically uh, a region with like a, with, with a, an Austrian heritage because prior to World War I, it used to be part of Austria. And uh, still today, two thirds of the population is speaking uh, predominantly German. So, um, it's uh, from, the, from, the, from the early days, we embodied that, like we have lived an innovation culture. We had the uh, German um, uh, area timber framing culture that we have from South Tyrol developed in the rest of Italy. So um, expanding on our um, tool, uh, on our tools and moving slowly also into other areas of developing connectors, fasteners, and uh, other products always related to timber 
timber buildings, better buildings, and uh, more sustainable buildings. Um, we have started exporting into uh, other countries outside of Italy in 2007 and 2006. Um, and six years ago, we have started ex uh, exporting to North America, uh, first into Canada. And well, actually, our first project in the US we had 10 years ago. Um, six years ago, we have started uh, to establish our organization in Canada. And uh, two years ago, we have started our organization in the US. Today, uh, Rotoblas has a sales force direct presence in 46 countries um, with 400 people uh, within the organization and serving 80 countries worldwide with our products. Um, so we have a broad range of solutions. Um, on one hand, fasteners and connectors, but also envelope and waterproofing systems, air tightness, all the methods and materials to make a house more sustainable, but not the insulation itself. I also want to highlight, we don't do timber at all. So we don't uh, sell or um, work timber. We are a material uh, products supplier. We also do soundproofing, fall protection, and uh, tools and machines. And I like to boil it down to um, an effort on our side to make uh, buildings work for everybody, for uh, the, the people that build it, the people that live in it, and then also for the en environment. Yeah, so uh, innovation, in, we, we, try, we try to do things today different than we did them yesterday. We're constantly trying to improve, constantly trying to do things better, um, to improve our service, uh, the technical values, to, um, uh, to improve the efficiencies and the uh, technology that um, we provide um, to our customers. And uh, yeah, we have a team of um, over 30 engineers working every day hard on uh, new solutions. And we bring then these solutions out to um, the market in our innovation work and in our innovation effort by um, producing literature. We have about seven main product catalogs. Um, about 3,000 pages of resources in 20 languages on our website and uh, more than 7,000 data sheets. So obviously I will just focus on um, our core. We come out of timber framing, out of heavy timber framing, and um, I will focus more on that, but it, it scratches the surface of uh, what we do and we will not go into everything today. I can stay on longer. Um, I can answer questions. You can uh, reach out to us or to me. Um, if you have any questions, we are always here to help. So this is uh, where we're, where our roots are, um, timber framing, heavy timber framing in the Alpine region. So in the background, we have the Dolomites and uh, the high Alpine meadows in uh, South Tyrol. And this, so timber framing has been preserved in these pockets of uh, Northern Italy, Austria, um, uh, um, Switzerland, um, France, and Southern Germany. Uh, it has also, and, and everybody here on this call is is uh, just is 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 uh, is a proof that it also has survived in uh, the U.S. Um, but in Europe, in this Alpine region of Europe, it has survived on a, uh, let's say, larger scale. So uh, still a lot of, um, like in my home village, um, I'm from a village of 2,000 people, every single roof, it's, I mean, it's not like this, that the upper, the full upper uh, story, uh, the, the roof story is made of timber, but every single roof is a heavy timber framed roof. And so there has been, a lot of innovation and a lot of um, also, it would be unaffordable to, to make this like every roof in my village out of uh, uh, timber if it was not for um, 
a new technology. Uh, technology on the fabrication side, CNC and so on and so forth, but also um, developments in, in engineering, on the engineering side and uh, connector side. Um, so yeah, uh, traditional joinery. Traditional joinery um, uh, is, is great, um, but it's not accessible, first of all, from a, a cost standpoint. Um, someone has, you know, uh, if someone can can afford uh, it, it's uh, it's a piece of art. It's um, it's something special, but some not everybody can afford it. And just from a cost standpoint of the fabrication, uh, so and then from the other standpoint of materials use that we have, especially these times, as we just. Um, as uh, the discussion just showed um, in the run up to this this call, uh, fiber is just very expensive. And with a traditional joinery have on one hand engineering limitations. And on the other hand, we're also losing a lot of material um, by having to oversize uh, uh, members because we take out so much fiber from the joints. So um, what we have started doing is uh, combining more and more the properties of timber that are great with the properties of steel that are great in a different way. And by doing this, we get, uh, first of all, the looks that we all love, um, but also very durable structures from uh, just a materials point of view and also um, durable and safe connection uh, systems. So we go from a brittle behavior that wood shows in in uh, in engineering to a more ductile behavior, as we see in um, in metal connectors. So we by combining wood with metal connectors, we get ductility, strength, stiffness, and efficiencies. Um, a great deal innovation of innovation happened in within the space of uh, screws, as everybody here knows. Probably screws are now everywhere in every almost every structure, and um, and we see. So this is this is an example of the of the screw geometries and design features that we have in our product range, and just to show how wide of a selection uh, we nowadays have from different head, head shapes to different threads, thread types, uh, different tips, different coatings and materials, and a combination of thereof. So this just to show that we have so many challenges and we meet these challenges with um, innovation in materials, even on something as simple as a screw. Um, a very basic difference between, so um, there's two main types of screws. We see all, we have all these design features, yes, but um, one of the main uh, differences is between partially threaded and fully threaded screws. And partially threaded screws, they pull members together. And we all want that, of, of course, but they are, uh, and they're easy to install. They're more of a commodity product. So uh, also co more cost efficient, but um, they're more limited in, in, in engineering, uh, from an engineering point of view, better for process resilience of installed process, especially if, uh, if, if screw technology is something new for the, for the user, and then a partially threaded screw is a, a better choice. Um, so, but, what with a partially threaded screw, the shear resistance is mostly, uh, I highlight mostly, um, uh, a function of the diameter of the screws. While with fully threaded screws, it's mostly a function of the embedment of the screw. So, we can uh, get much more resistance out of a screw with, uh, if it's de deployed at an angle, 
and the screw can work axially instead in she instead of in working in shear. It comes with advantages, disadvantages. This is a more stiff, uh, more stiffer connection. This is more ductile connection. So um, there's no best system. It's just what we want to design for. Um, so this is how, so timber is essentially a bunch of straws. Uh, conceptually, we could see it like a bunch of straws because all it's like how, how it fails is very similar and becomes immediately um, intuitive if you think about this analogy here as a bunch of straw. So it can uh, fail in shear and uh, crushing the fibers and, and it's very strong into uh, like forbearing on the end grain. Um, and fully threaded screws can be used for a uh, for for mitigating or reinforcing these um, these properties of the timber. So to avoid failure, we can bind together the fiber and reinforce the fiber with uh, fully threaded screws. So bonding the fibers together with fully threaded screws, like some call it rebar for wood. Um, same thing here. Think here we have a connector, for example, and the connector uh, wants to uh, split the fibers here, but we can bind these fibers to the upper, to the fibers of the upper beam, half of the beam. And also reinforcing for uh, bearing. So if we have here bearing, again, timber, if this, if this is timber column, the bearing is much uh, stronger here at the top of the column and on the end grain, but here in the side grain, we need to reinforce it and that can be done with fully threaded screws. Also here, uh, either reinforcing a beam or simply joining two members can be done with fully threaded screws. Better than partially threaded screws at 90 degrees are fully threaded screws at 45 degrees because that gives you more stiffness in that joint. Um, there is especially, I have to look up that, though, so there's a question, uh, does the shear value of a fully threaded screw change if the hole is pre-drilled? Um, a, I have to double check our new ICC because uh, we have we have now um, uh, the ICC on our screws. I will uh, go into the details of that later. Uh, we'll, we'll, I would have to follow up on that. But um, as far as I know, no, it doesn't influence that that value of the screw. It mostly influences the uh, minimum distancing. So the minimum distancing between one screw or the other, and between a um, and between the edge distances, are improved with pre-drilling. Yeah, here's some application um, application examples of um, screws. Screws can be used as an as as a, as a hanger, very cost efficient. Here, a connection like this could cost. It's like there's almost no. You could you could uh, route a pocket here for this uh, beam to sit on. Um, not necessary, but you could. But um, you could make this connection without any type of of uh, work on the members. And a couple of bucks for the screws. <clears throat> and you have a, a, a concealed hanger. Uh, can also be two couples, three couples of screws combined, and that is a really efficient connection. Uh, okay, thanks, Eric. Eric just answered the question in the chat. 
Um, so joining also for renovation projects, joining uh, an old timber floor with fully threaded screws can improve the can you know re rehab uh, renovate for renovation purposes of old buildings. Joining two members, uh, we saw this and a concept like reinforcing the fiber for having a beam hanger down here. Uh, metal wood connections. We see a lot of these now, those now with metal straps like this and uh, fully threaded screws at an angle, you can transfer a lot, a lot, a lot of shear load. So uh, one of those screws can have thousands of pounds of capacity and for, trans for, tra for, for, for transferring high shear loads, really popular system. And um, something that we see more and more is because also the sustainable materials and more sustainable building practices and also um, increasingly, increasingly uh, tough code requirements, outboard insulation, continuous outboard insulation with reduced uh, thermal bridging, we can build and engineer a screw a uh, screw truss, so to say. We have here the, the frame, tongue and groove, insulation on top. Um, then we, we, we mount the, the battens with, fully, with, with um, these insulation screws and we create a screw truss. So this screw takes the gravity load and this screw takes the shear load of the roof system. Also here, insulation can be soft insulation, non-structural insulation, because we can engineer this with a, uh, as if this was a cavity. We have done now, uh, I think a dozen or so projects in the last few months in the US of uh, using the system, so uh, really popular. Um, our, ICCs uh, that we have um, uh, developed a couple of months ago. Uh, we are really happy to have this now in our tool belt. Makes it easier for the engineers to um, use our screws. This is the first ICC in the States that also provides values for screws applied into the end grain at any angle down like 90 degrees is obviously the, the best angle uh, for, for, for faster application, but we now also have pullout values all the way down to zero degrees to the fiber and to, yeah, into the end grain. Um, covers 10 screw categories and um, specific gravities from 0 0.35 to 0 0.55, and also covers a wide range of Evo coated screws. So we now have uh, partially threaded screws and fully threaded screws um, approved for use in pressure treated lumber. Um, currently, we have ASD values. We have we 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 keep developing um, values for different products and some uh, in some Excel. Uh, calc sheets, we also have LRFD values. Yeah, screws at an angle. Here, this is a table from the ICC. Um, so for, for um, degrees below 15 degrees, we require at least four screws. And of course, the reduction is significant, but it just puts a number on uh, what the what the performance of these screws is also in these you know it's always preferable to if possible to use it in higher like in the higher angles because we see here down to 35 degrees the reduction is uh, very limited or let's say here it's between 90 degrees and 40 degrees it's just a 89 it's just an 11 percent reduction while um, here it drops quickly and steeply, starts from 84 down to 
not very efficient utilization of the fasteners. And yeah, also the uh, the Evo is now approved for um, uh, for outdoor and for for pressure treated lumber use, fully threaded screws, metal wood screws, and partially threaded screws with countersunk washer head. Um, an interesting topic in uh, timber is always moment connections, moment frames. Uh, so typically we try to avoid moment connections by using some sort of uh, bracing system, either some metal bracing or in timber frames, some, you know, the, the, the typical bracing systems. However, um, there is way there is there is a way, and we see increasing interest from architects, customers, and uh, also our builders, engineers. Um, they have a lot of interest in learning more about how to make uh, moment frames um, or moment connections in in uh, timber structures. So this is this is a a. a would say simple, but it's not. It's not so simple. You have to line up all the holes and all the all the bolts. It's a lot of work, obviously. But um, a very, it's it's a way to achieve that moment resistance in that joint. Um, another way is to use self-tapping dowels. So here we have an internal uh, metal plate. <clears throat> And here a, um, a dowel pa pattern that can uh, give you that moment resistance in this joint here. Um, we have a little configurator that can help. It's called my project on a website. You can download it for free that uh, you can use to play around with um, to see, uh, to compare different patterns and what could work in your application. This dowel, um, can be used. We recommend to use it on um, on something like A36 steel, um, and it can go typically. So it can go through a metal plate uh, three eighths thick. Um, but we can. We always recommend. We always like to talk with uh, with the with the uh, uh, with the people on site or the people are, who are going to install it to um, help them figure out the process because it's it's almost like if if it goes to those really uh, the thick um, edge application where you say, okay, it's rated for three eighths metal plate and we do a three eighths metal plate. Um, some experimentation uh, might be necessary on the user side and we are willing to help there, willing to talk to them and to, to make it work also on the project side of things, not just from an engineering uh, point of view. So we are also here, we walk into, we go to visit our customers, we walk into the, their uh, shops and uh, talk to them, help them um, have a success, especially if they try something new, we want them to have a success uh, experience. Another way is to glue joint with epoxy. So here we have an internal metal plate. Here's some washers, some distancing washers on the on both sides of the plate that make sure that that plate is in the center of the um, of this uh, cut and not like just laying leaning to one of the one of the sides. Then we fill it with epoxy. Have to make sure that we seal it up here. Uh, correctly, and we have solutions for that as well. Uh, so, because we have the epoxy comes in, in Zipox comes in different viscosity um, from as liquid as water, as um, like thick, like like honey, and anything in between. I think like four or five different viscosities mm -hmm. in cartridges or in drums. And um, what's great about this uh, Xbox is that uh, we have we have uh, buildings in service for over 30 years so this this product has been in use in uh, wood construction um, for 30 years and we have this the the 
the, a great track record of buildings. Yes, um, David is asking if the plate is textured for bonding. So yes, the epoxy bonds with the plate in, um, it's a sanded plate. So there's there's two ways to achieve this. The, the plate could, could have little holes. So um, you have like epoxy dowels or you could just sand it and then prime it. We have an epoxy primer because if you sand it, uh, it, the, it will start to corrode. So to avoid corrosion, you sand it, you uh, apply the primer, the epoxy primer, and then it stabilizes it for against corrosion. And then you can use it as, uh, can you, you use it like you can just store it for how, how long you want and then uh, use it as shown in this picture here. Yep, um, get a lot of interest in the epoxy. Uh, the last um, timber framer skilled project in down in Nashville had a ton of epoxy in there. Uh, just opens up a, a whole range of new application possibilities for glued in rods, but also for uh, complex joints without mechanical, mechanical fasteners. Um, moment joints in uh, for smaller structures, like here in, this is a moment post base, a concealed moment post base, post installed, not wet set. So you can, in, on smaller structures, you can do away with the, um, the bracing, gives you a more contemporary look, or if it's, if you're built an addition with, or like big windows and uh, the client doesn't want to have the the bracing in the way of the view or, uh, you know, all, all the fun things that come up, this is a way to address that and put that moment resistance into the bottom of the post. Um, we have a couple of different, a couple of different models here. We have the, the one without holes for use with self tapping dowels, the one with holes for use with, um, with, Epoxy, so this is this, the, the epoxy will bond to the like epoxy dowels to the holes so in the plate, and then we have a bigger model without holes. Thank you, Andrew. Glad you were you liked it. Um, and here we have of a lot of our. Um, Solutions. We have a uh, 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 uh. okay. Okay. So um, we have here a. Uh, this is an example of a product page. This is the extend post space product page. Some application pictures here. Mm, every product has a pro product page. We have related videos. And I don't want to brag, but we have the best music in the industry on our videos. So yeah, this is the self-tapping dowel post base. And this is the epoxy post base. And if, you, if you continue down here, we see um, technical data sheets, technical data sheets, uh, USA. You can download those, uh, the, the information here and you can download the CAD files. We have 3D files. And um, most of our products are also in popular design software like uh, CADWorks, SEMA, HSP CAD, um, and available also as a download in our BIMCAD library. 
here for different applications. Okay, let's go back to that presentation. I hope you see the full screen presentation now. Um, Defense by the breaking down over time due to expansion. Um, should there be a concern about epoxy bonds breaking down over time due to expansion and contraction from annual moisture cycling? Um, no, there is no, the, there is, so the epoxy uh, would have to look it up on the spec sheet, but I think um, we specify a, a rain, um, an application moisture uh, of 18% and epoxy is, epoxy is, uh, and, and from there it, it will drop, yes, uh, but then the, the moisture cycling should, should be limited, especially because it's embedded in the wood. So if it's not, if it's not, I mean, if it's, uh, I don't know, if it, if it floods once a year and it uh, goes up to 30% or something um, and then back down to, 12, then that could be an issue. But um, in uh, standard application, the, it's not an issue at all. And epoxy is epoxy. So there's epoxy technology and there is um, polyurethane-based glue technology. Uh, polyurethane-based glue technology is a little uh, cheaper in the material cost, but epoxy is uh, more durable. Um, uh, it's it's you know what's used in in bikes and in, in, in aerospace and carbon in, uh, in in carbon fiber applications and um, it has a wider range of uh, application in terms of temperature and moisture and it also um, uh, has a longer storage uh, shelf life we have three years of shelf life on. Uh, on the epoxy, it's very stable. Even if you open up the bucket, it doesn't go bad. As long as you don't mix the components, it doesn't go bad. Um, uh, I mean, we recommend to not open a bucket, leave it there for three years. And uh, but if it doesn't go bad immediately, if you if you uh, don't use it immediately, it has a polyurethane has about a working time of ten minutes. Um, well, um, the deep box comes with about uh, 30 minutes and also the storage temperature range is, um, is pretty big from I think something like uh, 30 to 10. Oh, what? Yeah, I, I have, have to look it up in the spec sheet. I don't know it from the top of my head, but it has a very wide range of storage temperature as well. So very robust for the application process and quality control. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's we we recommend to use the structural timber, and then the strength of the timber will also uh, influence the final um, resistance. I we have engineers on staff that also we have that we have done that several times now. Um, with our customers or engineers, walk them through because we have a uh, an approach to to calculate uh, threaded rod and uh, moment connections with epoxy. So we can walk you through that approach to make you more comfortable with it. I know it's a new technology. We're doing now a lot of uh, research and development. We're also um, involved in a project uh, uh, and. University of Oregon, and they are, uh, and and this is actually epoxy and gluten rods. It's a hot topic and has been will be also investigated there. Um, so we will have, we have already a lot of information. We have a good track record of projects, and there is more to come. Okay. I see. Okay. Um, another way to achieve moment resistance is um, instead of having it in the bottom of the of the of the post, 
uh, we can get moment resistance with some with this we saw this already the fully threaded screws at an angle uh, we have here the vgu plate with some mounting holes so use some standard screws to just um, fasten it to the to the member and then the VGU 45 degree washers and the fully threaded screws will will create a really like a great deal of shear strength along this uh, connection. Um, no, like a tension. Uh, so, so it will. This is like a tension strap for for the top of the beam. Here it's um, here it's timber on timber, and here is a connection. Here can be different we have different options but we need a shear connector in here for the gravity and in this case it's the um the disc connector that acts like a shear connector here and then this to the these systems combined will get you a moment resistance for smaller structures Uh, Steve asks, what is the largest fully threaded screw you make? Um, we have a couple of options. So um, let me go back again to the browser. In the V, so we have the VGS screws. Those come up to in up to four, four and a half feet length. And if that is too short, for you, Steve, I see that uh, Will just commented and Will is familiar with the RTR system. So those go up to seven feet and they are threaded rods. Could Yeah, one could also epoxy standard threaded rods or uh, this is a, this is an application of the RTR system. Threading a hole first, and then have this threaded rod. It is a threaded rod, essentially, but with a wood thread. So this goes up to three quarter inch and seven feet. If the self-tapping screws are too small. And and let me show you the VGU plate. So you see, you can do some pretty neat design here for smaller structures, open spaces with moment resistance on top. Um, Well, it's asking for stainless steel, fully thread screws. Um, we're looking into it, not yet, Will. We'll, one day we'll get you some. One day. Um, okay. Does one need to be careful when tightening a group of these angled washer screws in order to evenly spread the load among the group? Um, Yes, so we provide a minimum, we provide uh, some guidance on the VGU wash, washers um, on the moment resistance, uh, like so on, on the moment that should be achieved. We also here have a video for the, and I'm often amazed what mistakes can happen on site. So. If you try something new, try it first with someone who knows what they're doing. Otherwise, there will be problems. Like uh, someone who until yesterday just held a nail gun um, for two by four construction, two by construction. 
it's maybe not the best thing to start with something like this. So have someone experienced on site. Um, yeah, so we provide guidance on on that uh, in our spec sheet. I'm looking here at. So these are our spec sheets. Hmm. Yeah. So on first of all, we recommend to use. Yeah, we re recommend to uh, watch your moments that you apply the screws with. Um, and to use, we have a little jig like this. This jig will ensure that your screw engages at the right angle and the right position and doesn't, like when you try to, to screw it in, it uh, moves a little bit and lifts this washer up and the washer is not engaged with the plate here. So this, this little jig here makes sure that you have quality install. Okay. Um, uh, ben has a question that um, our engineers need to answer. Uh, I will forward this to my colleague in Jim and Jim will see if we can come up with something for you here. Um, all we have, like most of the stuff we have is on the website, check the product pages on the website and then if you don't find something, we're always doing stuff on the, in the back end um, and might not might have something internally that we have not yet published. So we could we can we can uh, we can look internally. So feel free to reach out uh, with any questions you have. Um, a hot item right now: the lock connectors. These connectors are a concealed style connector. They come in a uh, ton of uh, different sizes, also for concrete to wood connections. Um, they make it really easy to, so they come in concrete, uh, timber, timber, timber concrete, and also EVO. The EVO version is probably the first uh, concealed pre-engineered um, hanger for wet service condition on the market. So even if you don't have a roof, and you need a concealed connection off the shelf, this is your connector. It's very simple in install. Anyone can do it. Great for large projects, cost efficient, because it's, an, it's, it's a um, French cleat philosophy but structural, extruded aluminum, punched holes, process, production process is extremely efficient and then fixed together, gives you tolerance. One of our hottest items right now. Also here, this is a good example. We're working on, uh, on an engineering uh, Excel sheet. We have already, um, uh, one inter for internal use, we can, um, but that we will publish soon on the website. Let us know if you need something in this direction. A uh, similar concept, you probably have seen this already, um, the aluminum dovetails. Um, expensive machine time to produce these guys versus these guys. So we are at probably like 40% less cost this versus this system. Makes it extremely interesting. Um, very traditional knife plates. Um, uh, connections, we have those in a ton of different ranges from small to big. Oh, I have to mention, we have this, these also in very small for, you could even use it on a two by four. 
all the way up to big sizes for glue lamb. You can double them up and get have great design flexibility. Um, this is the Alu uh, Midi Mini Maxi. We have them a lot of different sizes, also seven feet bar stock to cut it to size in the shop. You don't have to uh, get an order in for all these sizes. They are in aluminum, extruded, always perfect quality, uh, punched holes. And then um, we have this also in a non-hole version where you can use self-tapping dowels. So the contractor doesn't have to line up holes, just drill the dowels through the aluminum. Um, a, a real uh, all-rounder and also the connector that we saw in the moment, co moment connection with the VGU washers in the previous slides. Um, this connector grabs any part of the timber, end grain, side grain, anything, because it has the screws at the 45 degree angle. It has a thread in the middle and you can use uh, screws of uh, like bolts or threaded rods to tighten the connection up. Even in case of shrinkage, you can go back and tighten it and you can also combine it. You can have two, three, four of these connectors in one connection detail. The diagonal washers don't have to get welded, but it would technically be possible to weld them. We do that in our spider application. That's a connector for mass timber buildings. Okay, um, good. Then, uh, so uh, this is a system that um, we see a lot, not, not yet in North America, but it's extremely common in Europe. Renovation of old buildings with a, a um, concrete wood composite floor. So renovation of the floor, getting uh, reusing old buildings by means of, um, of, re of, of, of creating a, a composite uh, concrete to wood floor structure. You don't have to change out the beams. I mean, granted that the beams are still good, but you get a, a, a stiff floor um, with the, with the, with the acoustic properties that you need and also the um, vibration targets to hit those, the frequency targets. So this is in the structural renovation um, brochure. The structural renovation brochure goes into a couple other details. Um, these are all our catalogs on the catalog page of our website. And here is the structural renovation brochure. The, some of these little brochures, they, they pull, so this is only 20 pages and it pulls um, products and solutions from our different product pages. So here, as you see, uh, we have uh, different options for ren ren uh, renovating old floors. So this is the old floor doing nothing. We could put uh, CLT cross laminated uh, timber panels uh, over it, fasten it with fully threaded screws and tie it to the walls. Or um, we could just strap it. We could uh, use, yes, again, engineer timber on top or very common again, uh, concrete timber composite. Here we have a comparison of the floor stiffness of these different systems. Again, in renovation work, epoxy is uh, very common. We can make uh, hidden joints without visible fasteners um, to you know, cut an old beam because maybe one side is not structural anymore, cut it and join it with steel plates. And um, moment connection like this, uh, glued in rod. It's also interesting. Um, 
in the joint with the with the wall the the timber beam might not be 100% structural anymore so we can reinforce it with rebar fill it with some uh, gravel or like infill product and then with epoxy just to save epoxy because the epoxy you know reduce the cost of epoxy put some infill material in there and then um, pour it out with epoxy and this will provide you this again with the strength on maybe a, dam a moisture damaged end of the beam in an old building. Um, yeah, so um, then we have, yeah, other systems that we're proposing here, joining to like replacing a part of the beam or uh, joining beams with threaded rods. Timber composite, timber concrete composite, screws at an angle are the shear connectors. And acoustic materials. Of course, uh, yeah, or joining an old beam with a new beam with by means of fully threaded screws. Uh, Mike asks if there moment is there's moment connection data on the website. Uh, we have the moment connection website uh, information in the uh, type X post space, um, and in in a lot of other applications, uh, we have all the different components that you can combine to get your moment uh, resistance. Like again, shear connector plus tension um, strap on top with VGU washer. But if you have, if, if the website doesn't answer any of your question, don't hesitate to reach out by email. We can set up a call and can have a look at the details. Uh, we also do these, uh, these bracing systems and membranes tapes for, for, yeah, for renovation reusing old buildings. Okay. Um, it's not that, yeah. Uh, a really, uh, a tool that we have seen extremely popular is the, um, I mean, the tool is, we, it is, okay, tool is not really into engineering, but this one is because we have, um, we have here a spec sheets on this tool for engineered lifting um, uh, and rigging. So again, that one is not on the website yet. We have it, we have it, we can send it to you, uh, the Excel sheet. But if you have to engineer rigging, let us know. We will put it on the website um, uh, sometime soon. Uh, I have to talk with the engineer, but I think we will put it on the website soon, the, the Excel tool. Um, and then also a spec sheet in, in a, for ASD, but the engineering sheet for ASD values is already ready. So we can share that already. Um, but this, this tool cuts uh, rigging time by 30%. So 30% less, not only you need less time, but also less people for the, for the, for the, for the rigging and it's engineered and faster, so less crane expenses. And it can be also engineered for lifting columns in the end grain, because again, our we have now values for our screws into the end grain. So you could lift columns by using the system, uh, screw a screw into the end grain, attach the, the wasp to it and lift columns without having to somehow awkwardly uh, try to catch a column with a strap. Um, so, um, of course, I think everybody knows the, the you know, all, all the old structures that we still have, like the, the churches in Norway and uh, thousand years old, the old temples in China or uh, in Japan. Um, 
Well, one of the reasons why there's those are still around is that um, it's because they didn't have an envelope. So almost all of our buildings, I mean, if, if there's not an error in the, in the calculations for the engineering, uh, they will be, they will come down sooner or later due to moisture, due to water and deterioration. Um, and wood is, is a material that interacts uh, in different ways with moisture and water. So um, it's, it, is, it is not directly something that engineers immediately think about it, uh, about, but it is something that can become a very, very much an engineering issue uh, a few years down the road, especially now that we put more envelopes on. Um, thicker insulation means diff more difference between outside and inside environment and also no moisture mitigate, no moisture management by, if you have constant airflow because everything is open in your building, then you don't have a problem. You have a problem on your electricity bill and the planet has a problem, but your building has not, has not so much of a problem. Uh, but these problems will get more, more severe and more difficult to address with uh, tighter coats and environmental um design for 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 more efficient buildups so we have to keep the rain out then we have to keep the air out and so air tightness in the in in our envelope and then we have to manage the 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 the, the vapor flow correctly so moderate climates are like cold climates bury inside and then having a breathable bar, uh, membrane outside so that moisture can flow out I uh, will not go into details. We have a bunch of solutions and we help our customers to um, make an, you know, an educated decision about uh, what to do, what to choose and um, uh, to, to, to have a durable building to maximize the lifespan of the building. On top of that, in our new catalog for membranes and tapes and envelope systems, we have I, um, uh, we have uh, all, all the climate zones and we have a recommendation um, what to use. For example, here I cut out the temperature uh, for cold climate, mm, temperature to cold climate. Um, so we recommend a breathable membrane on the outside, a barrier or a vapor or intelligent membrane on the inside. And uh, that will change based on the climate zone. Okay, uh, let me see if uh, the questions are here. Mm -hmm. If I have not addressed every question in detail, please uh, reach out. I will put my... Email address in here, everyone. Okay. Send me an email or find our contact details on our website. And um, Dustin, does the noise reduction system work? Uh, yes, there's a bunch of um, different uh, systems um, at different price points that can be used and then also in combination to, to achieve what you need. Um, floor build up, wall build up. Um, then Jamie asks, Jamie has a question about my project and the license. Um, please send me an email, Jamie. We have something to address that. And... Yeah, Ben. Uh, we have we have. Uh, it's not recommended to use this uh, at this steep angle, but um, we have. Uh, we it's always recommended for rigging to have like in an ideal world, it's ninety degrees with a spreader bar or something or some very long um, um, cables, uh, so that you get as close as possible to zero. Uh, Jamie, okay. Okay, yes, um, cool. 
Yeah, so this is the end of the presentation. I can stick around for another bit. Um, what the um, we have a ton, um, ton more of uh, ton, a lot of information, a, a lot of extra information. We do also uh, get involved in mass timber and um, a big uh, commercial construction. We have solutions for that that I didn't go into today. Um, here, this is our project in uh, our headquarters. This is our new 50,000 square feet uh, warehouse, and it almost doubles our capacity in our uh, in our in our facility. It's uh, 69 feet tall, and it doesn't have windows because um, we will have a, we have uh, an automated picking system. So basically, a rail system with um, uh, robots that will retrieve the product in the warehouse. Of course, we build it in timber. We believe in timber. Timber is not just a uh, material of the past, but it's a material with a great future. And uh, we want to show it, it's, it's ready, even for digital applications. This is the new warehouse. And uh, if you make it to the Dolomites in, in Northern Italy, you're very welcome to stop by for a coffee or see we have a lot of wine around here and apples. And yeah, this is the old facade from the first picture of the presentation. And what we do is um, also to show that timber is great for, you know, we see it all, all over reclaimed, reclaimed, reclaimed. So what we do is we will reclaim this facade that we had to take down for the new building and we will ship it down to Chile to build our Chile warehouse with our old facade from our Italian headquarters. I'd yeah, like to chime in and say that the Rosso Blast facility in that Alpine region is absolutely gorgeous facility. They're very, very uh, generous with their time and they share that lovely space with you um, should you happen to go there, and by the way, the skiing in the area is pretty good. So combine pleasure with a business trip and stop in and see Rothoblas. Thank you, Mike. And we also have notebooks. Oh. An abundant supply. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I did take a few with me. That's true. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Thank you, Hannes, for a, a very interesting and informative uh, presentation. Uh, before we go tonight, I, I just I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention that Rotha Blas is our event sponsor and um, a big supporter of the guild the guild events and uh, committed to our success. Um, Rotha Blas has been uh, contributing the connectors the screws, connectors, epoxy uh, to the community building workshop. And that has been a tremendous advantage um, for us. And uh, we did have quite a few connectors left on the last um, uh, workshop. And uh, we took those up to Hartwood where we'll be using a good, a good number of them too. So I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Hannes, for uh, your support of the Guild and what we're, we're trying to do with the guild programs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mac, and everybody uh, who is actively engaged and uh, contributing to these workshops. Um, you believe in, in, uh, in your mission, and we're very happy to uh, help where we can. Thank you. OK, if you don't have any other questions, folks, we'll call it an evening. And we'll uh, see, see you on the next one. Thank you, Hannes, again. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.